I'm drinking my coffee. I don't know what you are drinking. It's still in the morning here. I don't know what time is it over there. Ah, uh, here it's like a, uh, it's like past ten. Okay, 10, okay, 10, 10 okay, PM. okay. Yeah, yeah. people, people still don't in. drink anything. The, the night is still there, man. Yeah. Welcome to Shine in the Light. My name is S. E. Walibua, and my guest today is one and the only, one and the only, yeah. William Lust, K. R. M. He's a comedian, a musician, or should I say a rap artist? He's going to correct me. He's an no, entrepreneur. Just, just say entertainer. He's an entertainer. <laughs> he is a father. What go on, my brother? How are you? Welcome to Shining in the Light. Hey man, I'm good. How are you? Thank you for, man. for having me, man. Man, this is this is an interview yeah. my people, our people have been waiting for. Good yeah, to see you, sure. man. Um yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a Saturday. So it's a blessed Saturday. I had mm -hmm. a I had a busy day today, but you know like we talked like a couple of days back where we're gonna have this interview. So I had to make sure you know, it happens today, no matter what. So here here we are. We're about to apply peanut butter on them. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, man. Uh so yeah. so how have you been dealing with this pandemic? You know, it because it, it seems like you've been you've been busy though. You know, you never really stop. Yeah. Okay, when 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 the pandemic hit, uh, was it twenty? Was it twenty twenty? Twenty twenty. Was it? 20, mm -hmm. was it? Mm -hmm. was it? Yeah. 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 It's almost. Yeah, weird. when it hit in twenty twenty, you know, I was still living with my mom. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you are used to like you know going to shows, interviews, like physically going to shoot or whatever, mm -hmm. and then there comes to a point where it's like it's locked down, you right? Know, and you have to be in the house the whole time. So because I was used to like always shooting, always going out, then I had to like keep busy, keep myself busy. So I had to like shoot every now and then. Right. So that's why I, that's how I was consistent when it comes to to uh to 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 videos or or comedy or whatever. And then during lockdown, I wrote uh the whole album. Lockdown of twenty twenty, I wrote the whole album, and then I dropped it. God twenty twenty was like a twenty sixth November. So for me, it worked for me because I'm 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 actually a bit anxious if I stay in one place for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it makes me to want to do something to like keep my mind busy because you know as as public figure, mm. public figures we struggle when it comes to a lot of things. You know you have to like like manage your time like as a public figure and as a your personal life so they are never on the same plate but as a public figure you need to learn and and put them in like how to manage those things and you need to because we are all human beings you know when somebody approaches you as a public figure as as, as how they know you on social media you need to display that you know you don't you, you shouldn't show everybody your side as much mm -hmm. as you need they need to know but you right. know that's how i have i have to 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 fight those demons for okay, let me do something. I can't stay still. So that's how that's how I was able to, you know, drop the album, being consistent on social media and and even Chris Brown posted me, bro. You know. Yeah, I yeah. We, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to that. You know. Yeah. Even yeah. Chris Brown, you know, posted you, man. This is a big yeah. album, man. You know, do it for for William and I'm, I'm gonna get into this uh, solo yeah. fellow. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my niece, her name is Tolofel. Uh, so I'm, let's talk, <laughs> let's, go, <laughs> let's go back to your background, man, where, where, where you were raised, where you were born, raised, you know, because sometimes people, when they see you doing big things already, they just think like, oh, you know, maybe things were just rosy for him, right? Yeah. But you worked hard for this. You work hard, yeah. bro. You know, so let's talk a little bit about your background. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I grew up in uh, I grew up in many towns, but mostly I schooled in in Muchudi here in Botswana. It's uh -huh. a small town near the the capital city of of Botswana here, Habroni. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I schooled there, and I finished my uh, my I, 
Hey, are you a why? center chiefs? Are you a center chiefs? No, right this country for all Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like you're from Uchuri and you support uh Morolo Motal. <laughs> no, I, I, I support uh the team that my brothers plays for. Wherever he goes, I support him. Oh yeah, so I grew up in Muchudi. Mm -hmm. So that my background is a bit is a bit heisty, is a bit uh it's bad every time I, I, I talk about it. That's why I never get in too deep. Because mm -hmm. you know, I, I've been, you know, I've been, you know, when somebody says my life has been up and down and you know that now my life has been downs mostly or oh, just okay. a few ups but mostly downs uh -huh. <laughs> you understand so just me you know me and my dad we were never on the same page you know where mm. even at, at school i had a problem at school you know my uh few teachers was never about few teachers at school didn't i don't know if they didn't like me they used to like make fun of me in class and uh you know, a lot, a lot has happened back mm -hmm. then. That's why mm -hmm. I'm still here. You understand? And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one thing people think, think I've been through. They think I'm, I'm like from a rich family or whatever. And they think everything that's coming to be to me, like jobs and whatsoever. They think everything coming to me is like okay because uh, he has connect, his family history mm -hmm. has connections. Like I'm actually the first ever from my family to like be in the the entertainment industry when it comes to music and comedy. Mm. So like everything happening now, I actually had to wake up and work for it. You understand? Mm. And mm -hmm. and mostly, first thing every time when somebody asks me what motivated you to keep going or what what gives mm. you the the courage to keep going is my background. You understand? Is how how my mom raised me. How how my my, my uh, me and my dad used to talk to each other is i'm trying to i'm trying to build a, a better future for my kid mm. i don't want the same thing i went through with my father and i'm trying to show my kid what it you don't need to be rich or you don't need to be poor for you to pursue your dreams you just need to have strength and you just need to believe you, you need to be patient at the same time so mostly my background if it wasn't for my background I probably wouldn't be here as the the comedian or the rapper. I probably would be out out there, you know, ch chasing women, you know, trying to get something, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you sound like you're a really hardworking, you know, artist, man. You know, because yeah, um, I know for sure some of the 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 really uh, successful artists, you know, they work hard. You know, they don't have time yeah. to play around and you know and do other silly things. You know. Um, yeah. Although some of your videos that I have seen, they seem to be silly, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we all love them, though. We all. Yeah, the thing, what on comedy, comedy is comedy. You understand? Yeah. So that, like, what now? If I see somebody holding a phone and recording me a video, it just something in me just tells me, or no, do something stupid. Just, just get up, man. Get up. You feel me, man? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's in you, man. It's your comedy is in you. So are you a comedian first or a musician first? Or this okay. is just like uh, the whole package together? It's a whole package. That's why I, every every time somebody introduces me on, on stage, I always tell them or just say an entertainer. Yes. Because well, it just comes like with a lot of uh, uh, resumes, different spices. If you want peri peri, it's right there. If you right. want uh, barbecue, just yeah. Right. But I, but I started the thing is I started a lot along. I love music. You feel? Mm -hmm. Along loved, you know, writing songs back then. Way before I decided to just take my take me record myself doing funny funny videos and posting on on social media. The music has always been there, but you know, comedy is the one is the the thing that got me here. But as as time went by, I was like, okay, let me just. It's been a while since it's been a while since I wrote something, so I had to like give something the other side. Cause I get it, when it comes to comedy, mm -hmm. if you're trying to show people, or yo, I'm actually going through pain. When they see your face, they're like, oh, <laughs> you feel. <laughs> so I was like, okay, on music, I think I can be the other the other William. I can be. I can talk my story now. So that's 
if I want to talk something serious, I go through music. If I want to make you laugh, I go through comedy. So that's that's how I, I strategize my uh, my um, brand. Yes, my communication. That's that's good, man. So you studied your music when you were in high school. I, I think I remember you telling your story when you were in yeah. the class, and I guess you know you uh, the teacher mistreated you, or whatever. Is that when you decided to really tell your story? Uh, Talk about well, your struggles and talk about you well, know. <laughs> <laughs> the the teacher was making the time the teacher was making fun of me was back then it was like was like nine years back when oh. I was like yeah, yeah yeah back then that's 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 yeah that's weird. yeah that's back then but the thing is you know when you've been the trauma whatever the trauma you go through mm -hmm. whatever happiness you go through the trauma is always going to be there. You know how the, the mind and the brain works. Mm -hmm. The trauma always comes and goes, and it comes in bad times. So now every time it comes, I'm at that point, I'm like, okay, I just need a pen and a paper, and then that's it. As long mm -hmm. as I put the pain in a paper and go, go record, mm -hmm. a little percentage of the pain just went out, but doesn't mean the trauma leaves when I drop the song. The trauma still remains. Yeah. You, yeah, you talk about uh, this trauma, this depression, um, and as funny guy as 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 funny as you yeah. are, as you are, how do you deal with uh, depression, man? You know, um, and uh, right yes. now there are, there are a lot of people who are depressed. You know, I was just reading yeah. something couple couple weeks ago. I think there's an artist from South Africa, um, yeah. who you know ended up passing. Yeah, right? yeah. may you so rest in peace. Yes, may his soul rest in peace. You know, I, I mean, yeah. this this is depression, and 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 you talk about you talked about this, and you still talk about depression. How do you deal with this thing, man? You know, maybe you can even okay. help some other people out there. You know, I mean, yeah. the cases are different from every person. Yeah, right? it's different. That's what I wanted to say. Jorge. everybody has their own way of dealing with pain. Mm -hmm. But to tell people out if. Honestly, for me, if it wasn't for my daughter, you know, I've been, listen, I've wrote letters before. I've, I've posted, you know, depressing posts on I social saw, media I before. Post. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've called people telling people, yo, if I, if I leave now, please take care of my daughter and please take mm -hmm. care of my family. I've mm -hmm. been there, but for, at this point, the only thing that has kept me alive is, is my daughter. She's only two years old. You understand? So that's why I'm saying everybody has their own ways of dealing with depression or anxiety or insomnia. Mm. But for me, it's, it's, it's painful because, you know, there, there are days where I feel low, like low, 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 and I'm even suicidal. But, you know, whenever the suicidal thoughts come, I don't want to be far from my daughter because she talks too much and she... You no, know, she she's jolly. So I, sometimes, you know, when you're depressed, you don't want that too much noise or whatever. But for yeah, me, she's 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 I don't want to be far from her because she 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 keeps me in my own lane. But mm -hmm. the problem comes when I have a trip to go to for a show. Mm -hmm. If if because that feeling comes, you know the 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 idea that that thought for you, me and my dad, you haven't fixed your your relationship with your dad. Uh, mm -hmm the the science teacher those bad things that came you know mm. people saying you 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 suck people saying you mm. are you are a bad comedian or your music suck all mm. that they come in one one plate you understand mm. my background bad things that happened in the past and everything that's happened that's happening right now they come in one plate mm. and remember what i'm a human being mm. and all you just all you see when you see me is comedy but you don't know what it, Mm -hmm. I actually, I was, I've been at the edge where I was close to doing drugs, you know, taking mm -hmm. a, a, a mm -hmm. strong substance or right. a strong drug that wouldn't, that would have killed my future forever. That would have made it worse, right? Exposed me to the, to the, to, to, to where people were like, I was going to get blacklisted. And mm -hmm. I've been at a point where I you I used to drink. I don't I don't drink alcohol. I've been at a point where like a whole week straight I was drinking alcohol. I've been at a point where 
I was posting stuff on Facebook mm. and it, it wasn't just posts where mm. you like, you want to post and see if people care. It was just mm. me at a point. I'm like, Hey, maybe if I post, maybe I'll feel better. But mm. like, we all have ways of dealing with pain. Some of us, we feel like if we hit walls, if we mm. break down, if we mm. break glasses and plates, mm. we think we'll feel better if we mm. smoke ah weed or if you smoke mm. whatever if you mm -hmm. get drunk as long as when you go to bed you are high or you are drunk you f you think in the morning you'll feel better mm. but same thing happens the following day the same mm. routine if you keep going through the same routine as a depressed depressed person you'll never go to a point where you feel like you are getting better you mm. need to to change you need a change in terms of routine if if you're a person who is depressed or insomnia or anxiety mm. if you are used to waking up every morning when you wake up you go to the kitchen you mm. make break, breakfast you go play video games you mm. go back to the kitchen you make lunch the same routine over and over again that's that's it's not good you need to like change routines because mm. i was at a point i'm like maybe the reason why i've been depressed too much because it is it's been there. I always hit walls when I was young. I've always just mm. ever lock yourself in the room and just scream, just mm. you know, just wanna let it out. Mm. But it's still there. Mm. Like you, when you, when you, when you, you hit walls or when you scream, just it it, it goes out piece by pieces. Like it's mm. like zero point one percent and zero point one percent. And remember, it's like hundred percent, but it keeps mm. going out like zero point one, and it's mm. not enough. You mm. feel. So I was mm. at a point, I was like, maybe I should change my routine. Cause I always, if I don't have a booking, if I don't have a shoot, I'll be just home and just, Amara goes to sleep and I play video games. She wakes up, we go, I make her meal and we just stand there. So I had, I was like, maybe I should just change my routine. We had, I had to go out, go take her to play with other kids. I had to like take myself to date, go just, go have a lunch whatever the price is just go as long as something you've never done before maybe your mind will just you're not gonna heal but something right, will right a bit of right. change will happen so that's what i had to do so everybody who's depressed just you just need a change of routine mm. you just need to have that one goal one positive goal you want to achieve mm. on the long run i think for me that's what kept me here for the because 2020 2021 wasn't my best year mm. everybody what i've did on on social media dropping songs videos music videos mm. everything i have released last year 2021 was actually based on what i was going through last year mm. so last year wasn't my best year i lost my uh my uncle because mm. i i had i had two uncles so i lost uh the other one last year so Ooh. and then a lot Sweet. happened in my family my own home the family mm. i built myself mm. and uh a lot of people around me were just acting nuts everybody was just giving mm. me the the backs they just giving me a cold shoulder so i was at that point i was like why why am i here you understand mm. but that that was at a point where i had to change routine but mm. now you know i'm i'm still managing you know yeah. just piece by piece piece by piece wow there she yeah. is she's, there she is yeah. she's beautiful she's beautiful man i've seen you your picture of you actually a video of you guys you you were giving you you, you were giving <laughs> yeah and you were giving her kisses and you know i was like man this is beautiful man you you and your daughter you know that's that's wonderful you know man that 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 was deep and 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 really touching and, um, and 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 i know what you just said right now that's that's wisdom that's some nuggets that you know can help other people um yeah. so, but at some point did you did you reach out to anybody to some people to help or well, you, well, you, you know how media? you know how you know mm. how as as a how mm. men are you know mm. uh, yeah growing up i used to hear my mom yeah. saying your dad <laughs> doesn't want to get help but he needs help that's how that's what i where i am at this point i feel like if i go to a therapist i feel like i'm being uh 
I'm, I'm been I'm been a loser. Why? So I haven't reached out to anybody. But every mm -hmm. time it comes to me, you know, the mother of my my, my child always tells me, "Ori, you need help." Mm -hmm. But I'm always like, ah, "I'm a man. Come on, man. I'm good. <laughs> yes, I'll be good. Yeah." Right. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, re reaching out to uh, to uh, to professionals sometimes, you know, it, it helps, right? Um, I guess. But but I get it though. I get it though. You know, yeah. men, we we just think that you know we can resolve things by ourselves sometimes. You know, yeah. We don't wanna. We, which is bad. Which is bad. Yeah. Mm. Which is bad. Yeah. yeah. Let's reach out to folks. But I'm I'm glad that you are able to find something to manage it. You know, because a lot of people yeah. they fall in 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 cracks. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now that we have dealt with that, yeah. So how did you start? How did you start? You know, what was your inspiration to put up? But you told me about you know because of the pandemic, that's when you really started doing putting you know videos on TikTok, right? Yeah. The thing is, I've been I've been on social media for a while. I started comedy. I started uh, doing vines back in mm -hmm. two thousand and seventeen May. You know, so I've been posting just once in a while but uh, during pan pandemic i was like posting like two videos a day because i was like mm, bah, bah. you know so yeah but I've, I've been here when it comes to comedy i've i've been here yeah, yeah man you, you you're fantastic i don't know you said something about you know some people say that you know your 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 your, your comedy sucks i'm like no <laughs> Your, yeah, the comedy thing, is, okay. your comedy is beautiful and extraordinary, man. You know? Yeah, but the thing is, you can't always impress everybody. When you can't impress everybody, but you just need to have a room for disappointment. You need to know what it, whatever you do, not everybody's gonna love it. So, to me, I'm like that. What that's what makes me move. Oh, and I'm like, I have people who don't like me. At the same time, I have people. Either it's a small crowd or a big crowd. I know there's a certain number of people that look up to me. So I need to like show them everything they see, it needs to be positive. I need to show them what it even you have uh however your appearance, your appearance is, your however bad your background is, mm. there's always going to be that person you motivate that's gonna wanna be like you. You understand? So I, that's what I look at. That's why I keep moving and Sometimes I look in a couple of people who share my videos when they say something bad. Mm. I'm ex the next video is actually gonna be about that. So and I'm not, actually... I put it in their face and they're like, mm. yeah, but you know. Do you actually look at the comments? I don't read comments anymore. <laughs> that they will depress you. Hey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, they will they will give you a hard time. <laughs> As, as, as soon as you read the first comment, you are already sweating. You're like, mm. I mean, you, you me here. Mm. There are haters out there, you know. So. Yeah, of course, you can't impress everybody. Yeah, but if, um, if you if you have like a if if you started in the first place, you should have you should have a reason. If you wanna stop, you should have a valuable reason for why do you wanna stop. But if you wanna keep going, you should still have a reason or. Why do you want to keep going? So you need to balance the two. You can't that. make somebody happy if you're not going to be happy. So mm. it comes from you, your heart. Yeah, definitely. So growing up, uh, absolutely, man, absolutely. So growing up, uh, who inspired you as far as music is concerned? Uh, there's a, were you, there's an were artist... you listening to some, to some rap huh? artists or some musicians around? Yeah, here in, in, in Botswana, there's a there's a, an artist called Ska. Yeah. Yeah, he's been in the game for a while. So back at school, me and my friends by then, we used to listen to him. You know, I always told myself, well, you know, when, I, when, I, when I, I get the chance of, you know, at a point, I'm like, ah, if, whenever I'm going to get to that point, I'm like, I can now write a song, I can now record. Right. I want to be like him, but better. Wow. Oh, but better. Okay. But better, you know. Right, but, you right. know, it was it was humbling. I've I've shared a stage with him before. Mm -hmm. I've I'm I'm on the same song with him before, you know. And there's been many interviews where here at home they've asked me the same question: or who inspired you?" And mm -hmm. I always said Scott, 
But every time I say ska, people they like they like ah why ska? You know you understand. But you know, right. firstly you need to you need to locate talent at home. That's where you need to like okay, let me see. As much as I'm inspired by other people out there when it comes to music, he's the first person that was like if he can rap on a trap beat with Gaston, like our home language. I was right. like. Mm. I'll be like him, but bad time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Yeah. I, I think uh, I think uh, I think you're doing great, man. I think you're doing great. Thank you so much, man. I, yeah, I, I I think, yeah. No, no, you're doing great, man. So yeah. a lot of these artists that that mainly in 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 Habroni or in the south, do you guys have some artists like up north, like in Francistown? Okay, uh, hey, I don't know here much about at home. There's a there's a limited, what should I say, limited um, resources, you feel. Mm. Uh, for you to get your song played on radio, for you to get your song played on television, you need to come to Habron, the capital city of, of, of Botswana. Mm. But, you know, most most other, most other artists are based here in Habron, but other artists are based outside, like south, east, wherever. But whenever they have to drop something, they have to come here and mm. imagine you coming from the south like far 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 and you need to come drop a, a project at at a television channel and yeah but a lot of artists are based here and wherever you whenever you go out to so just go see you know go take yourself out for some lunch or whatever they're all you see them everywhere you see them you everywhere know? Yeah. But let's talk about your album, man. You know, one of my yeah. favorite songs because I listen to it is, is how it feels. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't um, like that song anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought. I, I mean, it's. I think it's a beautiful song. I mean, you, you have all the pro. The, the, the album, the whole project is beautiful. You know. Can yeah, you talk you so a little much. bit about this? The inspiration for this album. I mean, you you already said that. Yeah. Partly uh, because of your your family, right? Yeah, okay. Growing up, I always had a had a wish. I never believe, believed in wishes. Oh. But I always had a wish for a, my first born, my first my, my first my first child should be a, a a a girl. You feel? So every time back then when I was young, every time before before I took a bath, I would always take a a, a coin and just mm. toss it in the water and say my first baby should be a girl. Mm. Like, like it's, I even told the, the mother, I hope our firstborn child should be a girl. Mm. So when she came, when she was born, she came at a point where, at a time where everything was just hard. Mm. You know, she came at a, the week she came on, I just lost my job. I just, I couldn't get money. I couldn't hold money for a long time. So she came at a at a bad time, but at the same time, you know, a child is a blessing. Mm -hmm. So she came at a time where I was like suicidal at the same time. Or I, I used to go to church and I would be like, God, you just give me a blessing at the same time. You mm -hmm. just made me lose a job. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that was sustaining me. But at the time, at the time I was still living with my mom. So mm -hmm. I was able to like find jobs, you know, before you know, because you know when you live, when you're a breadwinner and you don't have a job, you know mm. how that be like, what? You know how that be like. <laughs> um, so I was, I was still living with my mom. Mm. So as time go went on, I was able to get money on, on monthly, monthly basis. Mm. So like on 2020, I was able to get enough money to go pay for studio sessions to drop an album. And mm. the whole the whole album was inspired by my daughter Amara. The name was the the name of the album was William, which is yeah. her second name. Uh -huh. So the whole album, most of the songs I wrote, and most of the storytelling you hear on the songs that are actually true. The back, everything that that I just said before about me and my dad, me and my mom, mm. me and the the mother of my baby, and everything was inspired fully. The whole project was inspired by William. And I always told myself, what it, what it, however the, the project is going to do, whether it's going to sell or doesn't sell, mm. as, as, as long as it's on a couple of videos are on YouTube, my songs are on iTunes, mm. wherever mm. platforms, 
like I was like, it can sell or not. The fact that she's gonna grow up one day and hear what a yo, when I was born, my father made a project all about me. So yeah. I'm able so she can listen to what I wanted to say to her at that time yeah. when she was born. So if it wasn't for her, there was there will never be a William album. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here right now. Wow. You know? so, wow. Yeah. That's that's wonderful, man. Yeah. I think I think uh, she's gonna grow, you know, grow up and 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 really, really be uh, grateful. Um, yeah. But it seems like your album though is doing well. You know, sometimes yeah, it did, uh, sometimes it did well. Yeah, sometimes I, I I think about you know the the business model, yeah. especially back home. You know how people are able to sell their albums. I mean, I mean here in the United States, I, I think that ways. To, to but I, it, I've seen know. I've mm -hmm. I've seen how how artists sell that side like it's as a, as a new artist it's it's not that hard to 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 reach a certain amount of right. sales right I'm, I'm only because that side I get it people mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. at a at a high rate even here people support but the thing is we don't have enough uh what, population. You know, mm. people. We don't have enough people here in 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 our country. But I've seen does it, because I live here in Africa in Botswana. Like I, I always see other artists on on social media how they how they mm. sell. I always see or a, somebody's album just reach platinum or gold. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it's it's my goal on one of the the days. You know, it's getting your, there. Yeah, for my next album. Um, I want my next album to be platinum. If it's not platinum, I, I want to have one of the big artists from states. Wow. Well, <laughs> all those things are, are happening. You know, yeah, 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 <laughs> all I those see. things are happening. <laughs> even as we speak, man, even as we speak, you know. Yeah. Um no, no I have that... I have a, I have a friend, I have a friend in in, in states. She's uh -huh. always keeping me up to date. Or oh, no, this happened yesterday. Check it out on social media. This happened. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, yeah. No, I think I think I, you you are a lovable guy. I think yeah. you, you you're going to hit it. You're going to hit it. Amen. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Pastor. I don't see. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I and I'm asking about this because a lot of this, but 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 you you are not only catering for for Botswana, though. You are catering for, you know, where yeah, you for the whole, for. wherever it, mm. wherever the music reaches, is how yeah. how you know because music is made for to put people together. I agree. How the music is a way of communication and yeah. it puts yeah. different generations or different cultures together. So mm -hmm. wherever it, it reaches, it let it be. Yeah, man, there's a there's a there's a lot of uh, Niger music now here in the United States, as you know. You know, <laughs> people, for real? people are yeah, people are loving it. So they're they're going to love yours, man, for sure. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, they're going to love yours. So, yeah. uh, but you have collaborated with some some artists from South Africa. Or? Yeah, I've worked with a lot of a lot of artists here in Botswana. Mm -hmm. But I've worked with also with a couple of artists in in. In in SA South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, one of one of them being Kulichana, the one who's featured on the song Solelo, like you were Solo saying, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and then I've worked with uh, there's an artist called Boiti. Mm -hmm. I've worked with uh, a couple of artists. Mm. Yeah, a couple of artists. But the thing is, I agree. Even even here, I will. I always. I'm always on. Um, like every time I write a song, I I put myself in a corner. I'm like. Kind of back then, I used to like beg people to put me in their songs. So I'm like, okay, let me put somebody from an underground artist. Now I've worked mm -hmm. with a couple of underground artists and producers on my last album. So that's what I'm trying to I'm trying to do now again. Yeah. So I'm, know, uh, it's like giving back to the community, but not you, charity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I showed uh, you my daughter, she, he was like, "Is this guy gonna be serious?" I wish she 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 was here so she can see that you can be yeah. really be serious. <laughs> You know, I wish she was yeah. here to just to see that you know you you know you can be serious. You know, you are not just yeah, a I be serious, man. Come on, <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's talk about songwriting, man. 
you know, the yeah. process of songwriting. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, I think the way you compose the song, I mean, this is more like a storytelling, the, the way I'm listening to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The thing, the thing, the thing is, when it comes to me, when it comes uh -huh. to like emotional beat, or should I say emotional instrumentals, mm -hmm. like that's, that's like my, uh, my goal, that's like where I can kill, you know, that's where I, I give my most when it comes to like, because if the instrumentalism is, is, is emotional, like it brings out the all in me, it brings out the order. Okay, okay, the last song I dropped was was like this. I can still say the, say the same thing, mm -hmm. but with uh, a different approach, you understand? So mm -hmm. for me, when I hear, okay, when I hear an instrumental, when it, whether it's vibey or emotional, the mm -hmm. first thing that comes to my mind is is a hook. Mm. You know, first thing, if I'm doing the song alone, first thing that comes to my mind is like a hook, like a chorus. Like, it, it, first thing, it needs to be a sing-along. Mm. It shouldn't be too hard, like verses. It, it's, it needs to be simple, but it needs to have a message at the same time. So that's, uh, then I come up with, like, words that, that are going to rhyme together. Mm. Words that are going to go together on the same line. And um, mm. it needs to be catchy at the same time mm. if I'm doing the song alone. Like the song Tinto, yeah? You know it, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, let, this one it needs to be catchy. But every song of mine, if I make it solo, if I make it by myself, every, every time you need to listen to the hook or the chorus, like there's always a line that I, I repeat from yeah, time to yeah, time, uh -huh. if it's a hook, because it needs to be simple, sing along and vibey and uh, and catchy. That's mm -hmm. the that's the the what should I say the the resume when it comes to the resume, a, yeah, a catchy you know, that's song. A, that, that, and 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 I guess that's your your uh, your secret sauce. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so you you have the beat first, then you you lay down the. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily, I don't necessarily have to hear the beat first. If oh. like I'm feeling some type of way, whether I'm feeling down or or high or happy, I can still write a song on the spot. And when I get at the studio, I'm just mm -hmm. going to record it. Uh, what do they call I'm just going to record it a cappella. And then my producer is going to put mm -hmm. the beat on top. And it, it still comes out nice, you know. Yeah, it so, just it just depends on how I feel at that time, whether I have the beat, the instrumental or not. I can still write a song with or without the instrumental. You are using technology. You found that you know if I can leverage this technology, uh, yeah. I can go far. And that's that's what's happening now. You know, you know? the thing is, kind of generation as the time goes by. Technology still changes. So I mean, you can, just what... record, you can just some of the you can just record the the, the album and then you put it on the shelf. It's gonna, you know. Be... <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. To use... <laughs> yeah, but but you know we have to like so everybody so those people who came up with uh, technology, the internet, whatever. Mm. Yo, I'm grateful for those guys, bro. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be making a living. So shout out to the technology uh, startups. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, are you yeah. familiar with uh things like uh NFTs? In yeah. right? I never had this. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that later on. I think yeah. you I think you'll kill it on that, you know. Some of uh um artists here I think they're using that, you know, just to grow their base and and and, and continue to sell their 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 products, you know. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll look into it. How how do you actually sell your music, though? Well, like I'm saying, it, it's it's just uh, what is it? Just through the through the mm -hmm. I think the website stores. I can there's uh -huh. iTunes, there's uh, there's a uh, couple of iTunes. These these music stores and YouTube. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like I monetize my uh, my platforms. Where so you doing it on social media, man? You have over two million. Followers on TikTok, tick, maybe two point seven million on TikTok. The last time yeah. I checked, you have about yeah, two million yeah, people. I'm, on... I'm trying to like have like at least five 
by the end of this year. That's more than some of the successful artists here in the United States of America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I just, it's just my goal. I'm trying to like, because on Facebook, I have like 3 million followers. But I'm on Facebook, I never put it up. I never put much effort into it. Because I know the Facebook, even if you follow the page or you don't follow, as time goes on, you're still going to have, you're still going to see the post from that page. But on TikTok, like, because everybody, or every country, wherever you are, everybody is using TikTok. Everybody. Yeah. Old people, young people, everybody is using TikTok. So that's why I'm like, I want to like have TikTok like is getting old followers. Now. It, used, it used to be for young people, now it's getting old. <laughs> Huh? I'm saying TikTok is getting I mean, like even older people are using it now, right? <laughs> yeah, but but the thing about it is apparently it's been there. Yeah, TikTok. Mm -hmm. oh, but now I just found about it around 2020. That's when I started. You understand? And after two years, I was able to get like 2.7 million. I mean, that's that's followers. incredible, man. That's incredible. Yeah, the most followed in the country. That's more than 2.7. 2.7 million people. How many people are there? In the, obviously, you are not followed by Botswana only. You are followed by... <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, but that's more than the population of where... Of Botswana, of course. Yeah, you know, you yeah. combine with... Uh, but obviously, I'm not... I'm followed... I've seen... I've, on TikTok, I'm followed... Mostly, I'm followed by people from SA. And then they... Uh, is it UK or USA? You Between the two. Mm -hmm. Can you hear yeah, me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. William Lust KRM, you have heard him. Very powerful young man. A young man from Botswana. Unfortunately, we couldn't finish the interview. I will try to get you part two here pretty soon. We're going to talk about uh, his aspirations for the Grammys. We're going to talk about uh, uh, his new album coming up. We're going to talk about uh, uh, how he wants to impact his own community. All right, make sure that you subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.